All right, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Claire Thomas. He is my uncle and an influential person in my love for science. And he also happens to be a pretty funny guy. He, he, he. Huh. And he's going to take you through a clam dissection. Take it away. Hi, I'm Claire Thomas with Tillamook uh, School District. And we are going to be looking at our, one of our dissecting activities that we do in fifth grade uh, with our fifth grade clamming and anthropology field trip that we had to cancel this year. Um, so as we start with clams or all living systems, we find that there are many body systems that are shared between all organisms. Those body systems are really important for movement like in the muscular so they can uh, move around like a clam's got to dig down. It's also got to close its shell. It's got to move food through its digestive system. A skeletal system that is used for support uh, so muscles can attach to it so that the clam can move around. Uh, Siphons uh, are not really a system, but they're part of a whole bunch of systems in a clam. Clams are filter feeders, and uh, they are going to pull in food and uh, send food out and go through the clam. So they're part of the digestive, the respiratory, the excretory systems, uh, all of that, and even reproductive systems. Really important to, to do it. So it's kind of like a, it's how food gets into the clam, it's how waste and materials get out of the clam. Uh, so the respiratory system, that's breathing, taking in oxygen, mixing it with all your food, producing energy so you can uh, survive and grow and then getting rid of your waste, your carbon dioxide and waste material. Uh, digestive system, going to process food and we'll look at the di uh, filter feeding in just a little bit here, but uh, they're going to pull in food through filter feeding and run it through their system, their visceral mass, which is their gut, their body. and uh, and process that food. In the pro in, while we're looking at digestive, we'll also see the reproductive structure, which is pretty common uh, in the visceral mass. And that's where the baby clams come from to make sure clams continue on. Without the reproductive system, the clam would grow old and die and there would be no more clams. Uh, and then our excretory system. There's a lot of toxins as we eat food. There's a lot of toxins that build up on our body. A lot of it is nitric, uh, nitrous toxins. Uh, and so like urea, things like that, um, that are poisonous to us, and we have to get rid of those. And so the excretory system gets rid of those for us, and that's, uh, the clam has to somehow pee that material out. And then the circulatory system, that's our system that's going to move materials around the body, get the oxygen to the cells, get the energy moving and produced, move the energy around, uh, get rid of the waste and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really important system. So it kind of has two circulatory, one that brings materials into the clam, the siphons, and then uh, actual blood circulatory system or hemolymph circulatory system that will uh, move materials uh, through the body of the clam itself. So we're going to take a look at these systems and uh, as we go through this dissection. So to start with, you have a clam like this and you say, whoo, uh, what do I know about clams? Uh, what, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it has a head, doesn't look like it has feet or anything. It does, okay? This is the anterior, the small part up here is the anterior of the clam. And we have a posterior. And then we have a ventral surface like your belly and you have your dorsal surface, your back. And you can see that if you take a look at a clam, you can see that there's a hinge back here that allows both sides of the shell to open. So its, it's uh, skeletal system com is composed of a shell. We call this a test or a valve. And uh, clams have two valves. We'll see that as we dissect. And the little baby clam begins to grow back here from the umbo and then grows out and major growth rings, I'm pointing to them right here, indicate the age of a clam. And this one is basically around one, two, three, four, five, six, going on seven years. And I wanna show you on our diagram here kind of how this fits. And so we can compare this clam to it. You can see the clams, it's a real life size clam up here. Uh, and this would be the posterior end of the clam right here. This would be the anterior end right here. And then this would be the ventral surface down here and the dorsal surface up there on, the, on a clam. Okay, and you can see the hinge and the umbo right here. So we'll refer back to this diagram at times so we can look because when you get inside the clam, they aren't nearly as neat looking as this. They look kind of gooky and, and gobbly. 
Okay, let's take a look at some different clams we have here. We're going to dissect this clam right here, the, the butter clam. Some, uh, but we have other clams that are pretty common here. For instance, we have one called a uh, Pacific Little Neck. It's the one you eat mostly in restaurants and things. It has lines that run down the shell and run around the shell. And you can see kind of the shape of it. We're going to look at the interior of this clam. We're going to look also at a cockle, and these might look similar to you, but this has no horizontal lines except a few dark patterns, but really no horizontal lines, while this one's got a lot of horizontal lines and vertical lines. This cockle is mostly vertical lines. This one sits on the surface, it's going to kick around, so we're going to see a difference in the foot right here. Okay, then the other one I have here is actually a bay mussel. So this guy doesn't move much at all. It stays in one place, anchored on the bottom of the bay, and uh, it's going to feed on the bay. And so this is a bay mussel, uh, which, was, uh, which are all these found in Neetarts and Tillamook bays. All right. So as we take a look at a clam, the first thing we have to do is get that shell open because, man, it does not, it does not want to open. So to do that, we have to take a knife, and there's two mussels right here. You can see them, they're called adductor muscles, the anterior adductor and the posterior adductor muscle. Adduct means to close. And so we have to cut through those with a knife so the clam will open up. Alrighty, so uh, we have this uh, butter clam right here that we dug in Neetart Bay today and we're going to go ahead and open it up. So what I have to do is get my knife and insert it on the end right here and begin to slice through the adductor muscle there and then find the adductor muscle over here, slice through it. And when I do that, it should come open. And if I don't quite get it, I can slice just a little bit more. There it is. I got it the rest of the way. And there it is, the inside of a clam right here. So if we take a look at this particular clam, uh, you can see several features. So to start with, we had the skeleton out here. And the skeleton was held together by two muscles. One muscle was this adductor muscle right here. Can you see that muscle right here on the clam? It's a big solid pink material right there. Uh, that's an adductor muscle. And the other one was back here on this side of the clam. And we'll I'll move the mantle a little bit. But it's that adductor muscle right here. Okay, right here. Okay, that's an adductor muscle, and so that's what I had to cut through on both sides here and there to open up the clam. There's one more muscle in this clam, and it's in the foot. So I'm going to dip this clam in water for just a second to get rid of some of this sand material, or maybe I can move it to the table. Okay, so it doesn't get into the inside of the uh, organs when I cut into them later, so they're easier to identify without seeing all the speckles, and you think you're looking at something when you aren't. This is the foot of a clam right here. So it's kind of a solid pink uh, structure right here, and it's a solid mass. And it, that's how a clam moves. As it's closed up like that, it'll take, fill this uh, area with blood, push it out, and as it pushes it out into an area, it'll swell and wiggle back and forth, and it's actually tipped like this. It'll wiggle back and forth like that, and uh, that'll make it sink down into the sand. Now, bay clams don't move much, uh, but uh, if it ha if that's how it does move when it has to move. And it'll swell that, pull itself down, and then relax that uh, foot. So that's a muscle as well as these other uh, adductor muscles here, two muscles. What makes that skeleton is this kind of a frilly material right here. So this frilly material which is where it got the name Martha Washington from. This is the mantle right here. So this little thin thing, so it's making brand new shell out here. So those of you who like pearls and stuff, that's the mother of pearl layer. That's where, if you had a pearl, that's where it'd be made. But these clams are very thin, so they don't make very good pearls, while an oyster is really thick. Within one year, it makes a really thick shell, so it makes big oysters, big pearls. And so it's, uh, uh, oysters are favorite, uh, organisms to culture for pearls, to grow pearls in. So anyway, that's the mantle and it creates the nacre that makes this pearl layer that then creates the rest of the shell. Okay, so that's a skeletal system and which protects it from all kinds of things. Now at the back of the clam you can see the siphons here. So 
This is the siphon right here, and you can see if you look at it, there's actually two holes in the siphon. I may cut across this to look at it, but there's an in-current and an X-current siphon. So um, if I cut across that siphon here, um, you'll be able to see really distinctly the two holes that make it up. Okay, this is tough with this clam sitting here right now. Okay, let's see if that did it right there. Okay, there we go. So if you take a look, you can see there's an in-current siphon right there, right there in that little area. Then there's an X-current siphon here. So the water comes in the in-current siphon and through this hole right here and just into the mantle cavity, the area inside the clam and around the body is called the mantle cavity. That's where the in-current siphon is, and it just dumps all the stuff that comes out of the water into the cavity of this clam inside in here. So as food comes in through the uh, in-current siphon, it's got to be picked up to go into the clam itself. So the food collects in here, it collects on the adductor muscles, it collects on the visceral mass, this whole body where most of the guts of the clam are. It collects down here on the gills, and you can see the gills down here on the very bottom like uh, right, right down here, those are gills right here. And you can see another set on this side. So there's two sets of gills or four gills, four gills total, two on each side. And these, the, the mouth, which is here, and there's a mouth right there. They have these structures called labial palps. Palp means finger. And so if you look at it, it's what I'm picking up right here inside the clam. It's this, these structures right here. And so what happens is it'll take these labial palps, stretch them out, and sweep them across the gills and shove food into the mouth right there. So it takes and sweeps across the gills and shoves food into the mouth. So these palps here will move out to do that. Okay, uh, and again, it's got palps on each side. So you can see them and into the mouth. Okay, cavity. So there's the palps on this side right here. All righty. So once the food's inside, it's going to go into the, the stomach and then through the body of the clam. Let's talk about the gills for a minute. So you can see gills on the external part of the clam right here. I'll stretch them out a little bit for you right here. So I don't know, you can see those gills. You can kind of see lines running up and down like a feather. There's two gills on each side. So I've got the upper gill out, the lower gills below that. This membrane behind it's part of the mantle. Remember that makes the shell. Uh, if you look on this side of the clam, you can again see a nut, one gill right here and a second gill right here. So there's four gills total, two on each side of the clam. We'll stretch this one out again so you can kind of see it. There it is stretched out. That's the gill and that's how it gets its oxygen. So the labial palps will sweep that and shove it into the mouth. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up this clam just a little bit more and we can see these structures. So to do that I'm going to cut through this muscle right here which is the siphon muscle. So we're going to cut through the siphon adductor. That's the one that pulls the, the siphon back into the clam or can push it out of the clam. So these muscles here, these are muscles on the siphon and they also help push out as they swell. It pushes the neck up as they shrink or contract. It'll pull the neck down into the clam and these right here move them right into the clam, these muscles here. Alrighty, so there's the adductor muscle there. We'll open this up a whole lot more. You can maybe see a little clearer, so let's review a little bit. So the, that's the adductor muscle there and uh, an adductor muscle right back here. Right back here. Okay, here's the gills right here and the gills right here. Here's labial palps here. There's two of them on each side and labial palps right there. Okay, and that's gonna sweep food into the mouth which is right in the middle there and goes into the stomach which is gonna be right here. So to look at this part, we're going to actually remove this from the clam and we're, well, we'll, we'll cut it open first while it's in the clam. So I'm just gonna slice through the foot and lay each side open. So if we open it up, this first part you look at right here, right there, is the stomach. So this is the stomach and these are digestive juices or digested material. If you eat clams, that material is what gives a clam its fantastic flavor. It's stomach and it's digestive glands that are right on the side of it right here. 
those green glands. Makes the food taste really fantastic. Then from there it's going to go through intestines and you can see intestines here exposed as the food moves through this visceral mass and intestines here exposed. So this whole intestinal mass is full of an, uh, of uh, visceral mass is full of intestines. I'm going to show you on this diagram right here of the uh, inside of a clam, which kind of looks funny. This would be the visceral mass. There's the foot. Here's the visceral mass right here. The adductor muscles here, the gills here, the labial palps here, and this would be the stomach. So the food comes across, these stretch out across the gills, sweep the gills. These can get really big. Uh, sweep it into the mouth, it goes into the stomach, and the stomach is for the digestive glands. All these things right here that you saw as green material, that's the digestive glands that secrete enzymes that digest all the food, the phytoplankton and zooplankton in the stomach of the clam. Then it moves into the small intestine in, uh, and up through uh, the large intestine right here. Okay, This uh, looks very simple here, it actually curls all over inside here. So it's really a lot of intestine crammed into that small space. Surrounding all the intestines is going to be the gonad, and on top of it is going to be the kidneys and the heart. So let's take a look at what that looks like in a clam. So here's our siphon. Here we are back inside of our clam. Here's our stomach right here and our digestive enzymes right, right there. So stomach and digestive enzymes right here. And as food's going to go in and enter and move through all this material up towards the top of the clam up here where the kidneys are. And I'll show you those in a minute. They're right back here and I'll have to take out the clam to show you that. But all this white stuff that's around inside, those are the reproductive organs, the gonads. Uh, and so they ha are either male or female and they uh, secrete either egg or sperm and they just spray, uh, broadcast spray it into the water through their excrement siphon and they get together the egg and sperm in the water and become a little larva that swims around. And I have a diagram of this right here. So we'll look at this diagram and to get an idea as to what happens with a clam. So if we look, uh, as the egg and the sperm comes out of male and, fe male and female clams, it goes into the water and it's going to form then a trochophore larva that's going to float around in the surf as part of the zooplankton in the surf. Then it begins to form a shell and it's got this little floating foot right here with a fringe of uh, hair on it called cilia and it swims around in the water as part of the zooplankton. When that foot gets big enough and the shell gets heavy enough, it becomes a pedaveliger. So no longer does it just swim, it's got a foot and a shell that starts to weight it down. And when it does, it settles to the bottom of the water and becomes a juvenile clam and looks like a little clam. And then that grows into the adult clam. <clears throat> so let's go back and look at this uh, clam now. If we take this structure and we open it up and look at the back, so I'm going to cut right here along the gills and remove this portion right here. Oh, you can see right here. That's the heart right there. So I actually don't need to cut anything to show it. It got cut it just enough off. We left it intact. This is the heart right here. And so the heart is a sac that sits on top of the clam. When a clam is like like this, the heart's sitting right here. And the kidneys are right below it. Uh, probably we can show that on here. Uh, you can see the heart sitting right here and the kidneys just below that. Okay, And the kidneys are going to remove poisons or toxins from the intestines, from the blood, and uh, they're going to shove those toxins that would poison the clam and uh, uh, put it into the excurrent siphon, which then it can get rid of. So, um, so this would be the heart area. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the rest of this so we can see the top of this structure. So I'm going to cut through the mantle, cut through the mantle right here on each side. And the, take this out, cut right there by the mouth and the labial palps, and take out this half of the clam. Whoops, I just felt myself squish the top a little bit. And so here you can see. The structures, this is to be the anterior, the posterior of the clam, that's the heart structure. 
the little tube, the dorsal aorta. This is an open structure, so the clam doesn't, it has circulation inside the visceral mass, but it's open. So this material in the clam, the blood doesn't just stay in vessels, it floats through all kinds of things, through the tissues, through the clam, gets reabsorbed in different areas, and doesn't have arteries and veins like we think about, but it does have a dorsal aorta that does collect the blood uh, and uh, does dump it into the excurrent siphon right here. Okay, on the back of the clam right here, it would be right here. Okay, well, we'll show that in just a second. Well, back of the clam right here, I'm sorry, right here. Okay, this is posterior. Okay, uh, let's see. So underneath that, if we just kind of take that and look underneath, we'll see a green, there it is right there. See that kind of a brownish structure right here underneath that heart? That, which sat back in here, that would be the kidney. So that's what's removing all the toxins and uh, throwing all those toxins like poisonous uh, amino acids, nitrogen, and things like that into the circulatory system so the heart itself can get rid of it. Okay, let me move that on over here a little bit uh, so you can see it really clearly. So you, have, you can see the aorta, you can see the heart around it, and you can see that it's really just a little kind of a muscle that just simply squeezes around that dorsal aorta and just keeps blood moving forward. So it's almost like you putting your hand around a, a, a pipe or something and pumping it with your hand and just moving back and forth like this and in the process that would push the blood around. But the kidneys remove all the toxins and get rid of it. That then goes dire directly up into the top of the clam right here and it enters into the whoop, into the siphon. Let's see, that'd be, it'd sit like this. So this would be the excurrent siphon right here, on the inside right here. And so it entered this area of the siphon and it would just simply move out of the clam and uh, leave the clam with no toxins and very healthy. When you eat a clam, uh, you're gonna eat all this. So people, they make fritters out of the neck often, put it in breadcrumbs and they make fritters. A lot of people like to chew the adductor muscles here <laughs> but the adductor muscles are really chewy. They're like gum, and they chew and chew and chew for hours. Uh, a lot of people throw away some of the, like this, the green and the white stuff inside, uh, the digestive enzymes and the gonads, but those actually are the best flavor in the clam. And so think about it. If you go to a restaurant and eat a clam, like this steamer right here, and I've already opened this one up, so we're going to look inside. Uh, you actually just simply, it's only about, uh, it'll be only this big because that's what they sell in restaurants. But you actually scoop the whole thing out and eat it. So you don't sit and clean out very much of this clam. You just eat it with the exception of the tip of the siphons. Uh, they're often black and will cut those off because that's where toxins can build up. So you usually eat the whole entire thing. And so that's, um, that's uh, from the siphons here into the... Uh, in current siphons over here to the uh, labial palps. Here's the foot of this clam right here. Can you see that foot? It looks kind of similar to the other one. And the labial palps are sitting right here in the front. Here's gills right, let's see, yep, yep, gills right there, gills. And uh, then the labial palps right there in front of the gills uh, there. And there's gonna be one uh, Oh, it's this thing I'm moving right here. Okay, that thing right there and the stomach right here. So it's really all the same. And if we took this, this out of here, you'd see that on the back side, you would have your heart again, heart and kidneys. So it's all exactly the same as what we just saw. And when you eat a, eat a Pacific Little Neck or a steamer, as we call them in restaurants, uh, they really are all uh, There's the kidney right there. And I can't see the heart on this one right now. I might have destroyed it a little bit. Okay, let's look at a cockle. So a cockle, that was the one that had the really strong lines that ran down like this. Okay, and I have one that I've opened up over here. This is a cockle right here. And in a cockle, they live on the surface and they have a really interesting shaped foot. So if we take a look at it, you can see it really comes out. Uh, and they actually will push that outside and they'll flop it on the ground as they sit on the surface and they'll just roll across the surface. They'll put it out and flip it and flip and flip uh, themselves across the surface. It can move pretty large distances. Or if a sea star, the major predator of clams, comes along, they'll put that foot out and kick the sea star trying to push themselves away from the, from the suction cups, the tube feet of the sea star. 
But again, it's got that. It's got the two, the visceral mass where all the guts are. And then it's got also the labial palps right up in here. And that's gills right here. So the labial palps right up here. Here's the mouth right there. So if you can see that, that's the mouth. So labial palps that sweep. And so it's got the same structure also, but looks quite a bit different when you just look at the clam. Okay. Um, so, and here's the digestive organs again. Oh, all clams have this little clear thing right here, okay, uh, inside of it. And uh, that's actually the, 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 the digestive gland I was talking about around the stomach that puts the food, the digestive uh, enzymes in with the food to digest the food. And it's called an epistyle, and it uh, simply, this epistyle will produce the digestive enzymes. All clams have it. I have another uh, uh, butter clam right here. It looks kind of like a worm, doesn't it? Except it doesn't move. But it's just a digestive enzyme. Okay, a digestive gland that produces digestive enzymes. This is a, another butter clam that we've opened up here. And you can see again the X current and in current siphons, the foot, the visceral mass. We've opened up the stomach from the front this time. So on the side right here, you can see the labial palps right here. They fold down underneath this. And right, right here, there's the top of them right here. And they tuck down underneath. But you can see here the, the style coming out, that good digestive style crystalline style and so that's what we're looking at right here is the crystalline style and that's only part of it there's actually must be more down inside here that if we teased it we could probably get it to come out let me squeeze it down here with my fingers we can probably get it to come out because um, it'll again be fairly long I see part of it right here oh part of it down here is kind of coming out in pieces okay might be from the way I cut it so that's in the crystalline style another crystalline style digestive gland. All right, so we've reviewed pretty much all of the clam uh, so that you've seen all the different organs that we talked about in the very beginning from the mantle, the adductor muscles, the foot, the mantle that makes the, the test, uh, to the digestive organs, the respiratory organs like the gills right here, two on each side, um, so the clam has two of everything on each side. It has one foot, but two of all the organs that are inside that clam. It's got bilateral symmetry. So that is the dissection of a clam. Uh, oh, looking at a muscle. So the last one we'll look at is a muscle, a bay muscle. They're quite a bit different uh, in that uh, they'll attach with bissel threads, these threads right here. They'll attach with those to the substrate. Uh, and bury themselves down in the mud and this part sits up with what looks like little algae that are growing on it but it still has a um, hinge in the back right here whoa this one okay huh. okay so uh, has a hinge on the back and a hinge in the front and if we go ahead and slide in and open it up uh, we can take a look at what a mussel looks like inside. All shellfish uh, are dangerous to cut open because they are pretty strong. And so you want to make sure you're always pushing your knife away from your body when you're trying to open, open them up. And they can all be as hard as this guy is to get open. Um, he just, he's kind of determined. There it is, and you can see the pink inside. Now, because these guys don't move much, this is the this is the mantle right here. These would be the adductor muscles. This is the foot. You can see he doesn't move much. He's got a little tiny tiny foot in there. These are the that's mantle. These are gills right here. Can you see the gills? There's one set there, and then there's two sets, one here and one right here. Two sets of gills again on each side, bilaterally symmetric. There's gills on each side. Uh, and then uh, we can see then the, the mouth that comes up through here on the sides and uh, sucks food down inside. And the mantle on these is real, the visceral mass is really small. Okay, it's really a small area where the mass is. And the kidneys, the heart's back behind, right? You can actually see it through the membrane. And the kidneys are up in front. Okay, so this, uh, a muscle is like, really small visceral mass, really small organs except for really big gills. 
Uh, but a lot of people really like them and they are really pretty orange color when they're cooked. So that's a bay mussel versus a mussel found on the coast, which would look very much like that inside also, just a little different shape. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I hope you go clamming and enjoy clams at some time in your life because they are one of those delicacies that come off the coast of Oregon in Neatarts Bay and Tillamook Bay.